When her father, King George VI, died, she was appointed to the throne. In 1952, Queen Elizabeth spent the majority of her life sitting on the throne and representing the British crown. She was just 25 years old, she was a young mother and wife. Over the course of her time as monarch, the queen witnessed wars, assassinations, hardships, and so much more. Though she's known for her rigid regal nature, she wasn't exactly able to escape scandal. Hello guys, welcome back to Amazing Videos TV. Here are some stunning secrets you never knew about Queen Elizabeth's life. To stay up to date with our future videos, please subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so you get notified each time we post new videos. So, without any ado, let's dive into the video. Queen Elizabeth II was never supposed to be queen. In fact, she was supposed to live out her life on the sidelines of the public eye. However, that all changed drastically when her uncle, King Edward VIII, abdicated the crown and was succeeded by her father, King George VI. Queen Elizabeth was just 10 years old when the course of her life changed forever. Queen Elizabeth never expected to take the throne at such a young age. In fact, she was completely oblivious to the state of her father's health. Unfortunately, nearly everyone on earth found out about his death well before she did. King George VI died sometime in his sleep on February 5, 1952. However, Queen Elizabeth and her husband, Prince Philip had embarked on a royal tour at the behest of her father and were in the remote Treetops Hotel in Kenya's Aberdeer National Park when the news broke. It wasn't until early afternoon till a reporter from a local newspaper called and told Philip that King George had died. A Gambling Queen It's well known that the Queen loved her horses, she had a penchant for gambling. Queen Elizabeth II made quite a bit of money over the years on her prized animals. Radar Online reports that in the last three decades, the British Horse Racing Authority shows that the Queen made $8.8 .8 million off of her thoroughbreds. Queen Elizabeth's Life in the Palace Though her other three children, Princess Anne, Prince Edward, and Prince Andrew, have all spoken warmly about their mother and how much she cared for them as children, King Charles III has another story. The eldest of the four, the King said in his 1994 biography by Jonathan Dimbleby that it was inevitably the nursery staff who taught him to play, witnessed his first steps, and punished and rewarded him. Though Queen Elizabeth was worth millions of dollars and was said to be very fair with her staff, she still had a bit of a cheap streak. In fact, it's the chefs in the royal household that felt the brunt of her frugality. She refused to allocate any money toward kitchen supplies. It's so bad that the cooks were forced to use pots and pans from the 1800s that still have Queen Victoria's stamp on them. The Queen's frugality often meant that she and her staff were living in darkness. A former royal aide told sometimes she goes from room to room turning off lights. Often huge palaces only have one light on. And for all the chandeliers in the palace, you never see any of them lit up except for special occasions. How the Queen Treated Her Children It is said the Queen felt a great deal of guilt over being called to serve her country over raising her children. Therefore, though she was very tight with her own budget, she indulged her children out of guilt. A former cleric explained in her own financial matters, she is tight, but she's been very extravagant with her children, she's indulged them terribly. She allowed Andrew and Sarah to build that house in Ascot when there were perfectly good homes available elsewhere. So far as I could see, they couldn't have cared less about the budget, but the queen didn't come down on them, she just paid up, and that was very wrong. On that count, she's guilty in spades. Queen Elizabeth's Family Since the royals are known to intermarry, it's probably not shocking to most that Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, were third cousins. They met when the future queen was 13 and the prince was 18. The young Elizabeth was utterly enchanted with her husband from the very first time they met. It's bad enough that King Edward VIII abdicated the crown, but Queen Elizabeth II was devastated to discover that he and his wife Wallace Simpson were also accused of being Nazi sympathizers. Simpson had a love affair with a Nazi before meeting Edward, and the former king was very proud of his German heritage. As a result, the couple went as far as to visit Hitler in October 1937. Apparently, Hitler desperately wanted Edward back on the throne so that he could act as his puppet, the life of royals under Queen Elizabeth. When Queen Elizabeth was officially crowned in 1953, the Duke did not receive a title change. In fact, he did not become a prince until 1957, but at the Queen's coronation, he dedicated himself to her. According to the BBC, he said, 
I, Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, do become your liege man of life and limb, and of earthly worship, and faith and truth I will bear unto you, to live and die, against all manner of folks. So help me God." The years following his wife's coronation were not easy for Prince Philip, who grew up at a time when men had the final say. Apparently, he felt emasculated and restless. The prince was given a new title by his wife in 1957 in hopes that it would ease the mounting tension in their marriage. Prince Philip died in 2021. It has been rumored that over the years, Prince Philip hasn't exactly been faithful to the Queen. There have been many whispers about the Duke of Edinburgh's various relationships with other women. There was a report in The Sun that stated that the prince was romantically involved with an unnamed woman whom he met on a regular basis in the West End apartment of a society photographer. There has never been any evidence of his infidelity, but even the crown nods toward it. The proper royal chain was shattered well before Queen Elizabeth's uncle decided to risk it all for love. In 2012, the remains of King Richard III were discovered 500 years after his death. After the DNA testing was done, scientists discovered that they could not link the remains to any paternal relatives. This means that somewhere along the line, someone had an affair and an illegitimate heir was put in power. If you think about it, this means that Queen Elizabeth II actually has no business ruling. Queen Elizabeth's approach to royal scandals The 90s were a rough era for the royals. Princess Anne divorced her husband after he fathered a child outside of his marriage, Prince Andrew divorced Duchess Sarah Ferguson, and of course, Prince Charles and Princess Diana's marriage crumbled. The future king had long since been carrying on an affair with his now wife, Camilla Parker Bowles, and everyone including the queen knew. Some blamed Queen Elizabeth for not putting a stop to it. Though the queen was more than capable of handling the business of the crown, including her many wayward prime ministers, she found being the head of her family much more difficult, which annoyed the royal staff. A former palace press secretary revealed, she was always terribly diffident on family issues. She doesn't like Rose and is in no way a feminist, so she was more than happy to leave everything either to her husband or us. You put a family issue to the queen, and she'd say, have you asked Philip, Charles, Andrew, whoever it happened to be, and you felt like saying, no, ma'am, it's up to you. But she always wanted someone else to do it, because she knew there'd be a humdinger of a reaction. It was left to courtiers to take the flack. The monarchy after Queen Elizabeth. Since much of the queen's focus in her life was making sure the country ran smoothly, she did not always prepare herself, her family, or her country for a smooth transition. According to one of Prince Charles' aides, it has been one of her most significant failings. In some ways, the queen has behaved as if she is the only one who matters. She has not planned for the future very well. She almost seems to see herself as the last sovereign. Everything has been about what was good for her, not what was good for the monarchy in the long term. Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8, 2022 after 70 years on the throne. She left Britain at a crossroads and left Britain mired in economic, political and social problems and also left a volcano inside the royal palace that will erupt in an instant. Despite the high cost of the funeral, more than $20 million. As if Britain wants to say that I am still fine, but the truth is apparent to all that the political and economic situation in Britain is catastrophic. Okay guys, thank you for watching the video and I hope you found it entertaining. Did you find this video interesting? Let us know in the comments section and please share the video and subscribe our channel. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.